So today we're going to be taking a look at the Elementor Cloud Platform. This is basically WordPress, Elementor Pro, and your cloud hosting all bundled into one for $99 per year, all done through Elementor itself. On top of that, you also get SSL and security backup features and some typical things you'd expect from using any kind of hosting. So what you're going to get then is the normal full featured version of Elementor Pro with some limitations on what you can and can't install on the platform itself. We'll come on to those a little later. So once you go ahead and pay your $99, what exactly are you getting for that? Well, first of all, you could say, well, it's $49 for a single pro license for Elementor. So you're paying $50 per year for your hosting. And as part of that, you're going to get 100 gigabytes of bandwidth, 20 gigabytes of storage, and 100,000 visitors to your site. Now, this leads me on to one of the things that I'm not really, I don't really like, and this isn't specific to Elemental Cloud's offering. This is just hosting companies in general that do this. If you're giving bandwidth, there's no point in putting a limitation on the number of visitors and vice versa, because they're kind of it's kind of pointless because you could have one visitor that hops onto one simple page and then leaves. They use maybe 100 kilobytes of data. You get someone then that goes on there and they view your entire website and watch videos you may have stored on there and they use 200 megabytes of data. Well, what's the point? Because which one of the limits is the most important limit? So first of all, that's one of the things that I don't really like about this offering. Either give us a bandwidth allowance or give us a visitor allowance. You can't have both. Kind of makes it a bit awkward. But like I say, that's not limited solely to Elementor's cloud platform. Okay, so $99 a year gives us those features. Like I say, there are some limitations which we'll come on to in a moment. Now, once you go ahead and you purchase your account, you get one website. This is one single website. And then you go through a simple three-step wizard, which will set up the cloud hosting, set up your website, and set up your credentials in the background ready for you. Now, this takes a couple of minutes, but this is typical of any kind of cloud hosting that I've tested. It does take a little bit longer to set things up behind the scenes than it does with your typical reseller hosting on a dedicated server. Cloud just generally takes a little bit longer to set everything up. So once that's done, that's a one-time operation and then you are done. You'll be given a temporary Elementor domain, which you can change yourself in your dashboard to your own personal domain. So that's how easy that side of things is. And it is relatively easy to do. Even if you're not familiar with working with tools like this, you don't have to worry about the setup and so on of WooCommerce and all those kinds of things. It's all done for you. Now, once you've gone ahead and you've purchased it and you've set up your account, you can then log into the Elementor account dashboard and inside there, it will show you all of the websites you have either hosted yourself through the normal WordPress installation or through hosted by Elementor. So you can see when you log in, this allows you to see hosted by third party, hosted by Elementor, all, and you can favorite things. And then this will show you the website or websites you have as part of your cloud account. So you can see when we hover over this, we get three different options. We can open the dashboard, we can edit with Elementor directly, or we can manage the website. We've also got the option for these three little dots, which allows us to view the website, to unlock the site, to view related subscription information, and so on. You'll also notice that the site lock is on. This is on by default. And what this basically means is that when you're working on your site, the site is locked so the search engines can't see it. This just means you get that extra level of security that it's not being spied at, not being searched, and you're not having to worry about pages that are in development being sort of listed in Google and so on. There's some other things that kind of link into this site lock as well. And you can have uh, lock pin keys to allow people to get access to the site and so on. So it's quite useful. That is on by default. And to remove that, you can simply go ahead and unlock your site, or you can do this inside the dashboard of WordPress for this particular site. It's all relatively easy to work with. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the related subscription. So when you create your account, this is where you'll be able to manage it. This is your subscription, and this is an annual subscription. So every year, currently, you'd be paying $99 for that cloud hosting and your website, your uh, Elementor license, Elementor Pro license. As you can see, $99, I started this yesterday, and it gives you information about your bandwidth, storage, and monthly visitors. You can see it currently tells me this is active, and if we come to the three dots in the top right-hand corner, you can specify whether this is auto-renewed automatically for you. By default, in my instance, this was set to off, so that's a good thing to see that this is not automatically going to renew, but if you want that automatic renewal, 
it's worthwhile making sure you go in and check that that is enabled for your particular use case. And then you've got your billing information, your billing history, and so on. So you can see all your invoices and everything inside there. Okay, so once you've done that, you can see that we can go ahead, go back to our websites, and let's take a look at what we have inside here. So first of all, let's go ahead and open the dashboard of WordPress app and see what differences we have inside here compared to a normal Elementor or Elementor Pro setup in a self-hosted WordPress website. Now, I'm not going to slow this down. I'm going to leave this running in the background so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. So now you can see that we've got a bit of a mishmash going on with the dashboard. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. And as you can see, we've got an update available to WordPress 5.91. Let's just refresh this because it still seems to be loading for some apparent reason. Yeah, so I'm going to leave, whenever I'm kind of doing anything inside you, I'm not going to pause the video or cut anything. I'm literally going to let you see exactly what I see inside you so you can get a feel for the experience I'm getting and you potentially could get. So let's just stop this a second because I don't know what's going on there. Let's refresh this, see if that clears up the problem. No, it doesn't. So we can dismiss this and get rid of that weird glitchy thing. And you can see we get a relatively typical looking dashboard. We can go to our screen options and we can, as always, configure this. And you can see we've got some elemental based features such as quick actions, news and information and so on, resources, those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and update this and make sure that everything works okay. Oh, look, you can see there's my, my ticket that I put up yesterday, which apparently um, timed out, apparently. So we'll take that for what it's worth. And we'll come up with the support a little bit later. So let's just minimize that. Oh, but just in case you're wondering, the little life thingy by there is meant to be your support side of things, your online chat. Okay, let's go ahead and update this to make sure that updates work okay and see if that rectifies any of the problems. So the update was relatively quick and okay. You can see we can go to switch to automatic updates for maintenance and security releases, releases only, but we'll leave that as it is. Let's go back to our dashboard again and see if that's cleaned up whatever the problem was. Yeah, you you can see there's still a few kind of weird glitchy things going on here. But yeah, so we'll, we'll leave that as it is for now. So let's take a look at some of the things that are different inside you. You've got an activity log, which is a plugin that's been automatically installed. So we go ahead and take a look at that. Inside there, this will show you all the activity, the kinds of things that you've done and those kinds of things. So that could be useful and maybe not so much so in other cases. Now, there's one thing I do want to draw your attention to. Let's go back to our dashboard. If you take a look at the top right hand corner, you can see that the account has been set up with admin as my username. Now, if you are familiar with WordPress, you'll know one of the first things they say from a security point of view is to change the username when you set things up to something that's not the default admin. Problem being, this is automatically set up with admin as the default. However, if we come into the users and into my profile, because this has been set up, you'll notice that the username admin cannot be changed. So a typical user that may not be comfortable with WordPress, maybe new to it, or they kind of jump in on this because they want that added security and those kinds of things, that to me needs to be changed. We do not want to have admin, even if it's a random string of characters, that's fine. And if there's a way of changing this in the dashboard of uh, Elementor, please do let me know in the comment section below. But that by default should not be the case if you ask me. That is a security problem right there. Bear that in mind, it's important. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the appearance. So if we go into the themes inside there, one of the limitations we have with this cloud platform, and I do understand the reasoning behind this, after speaking to one of the people at Elementor about the cloud platform, one of the things they stressed was that the whole point of restricting access to various different plugins and potentially themes is to reduce the potential for update issues, which if you've ever used Elementor or Elementor Pro, you'll know that with the 50,000 plus plugins that you can get access to as part of WordPress, there's potential there for conflicts. And this can lead to Elementor not loading, problems with the front end, problems with the back end. So you can understand the, the reasoning behind why they want to limit or restrict access to some of those things. So bear that in mind. If this is something that you want carte blanche access to any theme you want to use, any plugin you want to use, this is not the platform for you. But the reasoning behind it does make sense. So like I say, I understand the point there. 
but this is something that you should be aware of when you're making a decision as to whether Elementor Cloud is a platform that you want to start working with for yourself or for clients. So let's say I want to install a third party theme. Let's go ahead and click on Add New. And let's take a look. You know that I like the Bloxy theme. So let's take a look. And as you can see, we can install Bloxy. So if you don't want to use Hello, you could use Bloxy. You could probably use Astra. Let's take a look. There we go. Astra is involved in there. And if we say Cadence, because we know that's an incredibly popular theme right now. And again, so you shouldn't have too many problems installing very popular themes and using those as the basis for your website. Thing is, though, when it comes to plugins, that is a little bit of a different scenario. If we go to Add New, you can see that we can go ahead and we can start searching. So let's just say we wanted to use something like WP Vivid Backup Pro. Let's just do a search for that. And you can see this is incompatible. Let's click on Learn More, and then we can get a list of all of the plugins that are not currently compatible. So this is a good thing for the reasons that I said in previously, but also a bad thing because if you want to use this with your own backup service, especially if you like to do backups and maintenance yourself using a tool like MainWP, then this removes that ability to do that. So again, this is one of those things that you need to be aware of when you make a decision about going onto a platform like Elementor Cloud. There are going to be limitations, and obviously you can't install additional page builders like Visual Composer, Brizzy, those kinds of things. That's not going to work either. So I would recommend that you take a look at what isn't supported right now, what you can't put on there, and if they are important to you, maybe you need to look elsewhere right now. Okay, so that's the plugin side of things. And you see, we just literally cannot install it. So you can't install it and have a problem with it. It just literally cannot be installed. So like I say, these are some of the limitations of the cloud platform that you need to be aware of. Now, what we're talking about backups and things like that, how do you handle backups if that's included? And can you, if you decide to later on down the line, export your website from the cloud platform and then self-host it? Or are you locked in to only using the Elementor cloud platform? Well, let's hop back over into our Elementor account. Let's go ahead then and take a look at managing the website. You can see inside here, this now gives us an overview of the website itself, tells us this currently locked, which we can change, and it gives us information about the temporary domain and those kinds of things. Underneath, you can see we can go ahead and manage our domain. So currently, this is using the temporary uh, Elementor Cloud domain, but I can change that, set it as primary, add extra domains, those kinds of things. So you can go ahead and you can show you how to do it. So this helps and support there for you. You've then got information about the DNS records. And as you can see, my data center is Belgium, which I'm a little bit confused at. I would have thought, as this is based on cloud servers from Google, that we'd have UK-based servers. So again, this is one of those things that you need to be aware of because this can affect the speed in which site visitors will see the site. If you've got predominantly you know, UK-based visitors based in UK, you'd ideally want to have a UK-based server. So bear that in mind. You've then got a pin code if you want to unlock things and so on. What I'm interested in, though, is the backups. Now, this is one of the things that I tested when I originally did the video yesterday covering these different points. I hadn't tested the backup to see if you could actually export your site. So the backups automatically back up what looks like every 48 hours. You can see I've got one from yesterday and one from today. And then we've got the test backup in between. Now, I could, if I wanted to, restore directly inside here. So we can restore from any of these backups. And you can see I can also export or I can delete. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and export this again, but let me just quickly say that when you export it, you do get a full copy of the website. You get the entire website structure in a folder and you get a MySQL dump. So this would mean that you'd have to be a little bit tech savvy or you'd have to have a hosting company that you wanted to work with that would give you technical support to help you with this. But you could theoretically export a site that you'd set up and we're using on cloud with Elementor and move that over. Obviously, you'd lose your license, so you would need to then purchase a license for your Elementor Pro if you were using that. So bear that in mind, and there may be some other limitations, but from my basic testing, you could export this and upload it to your own servers and get it running with a little bit of technical know-how. But all the files and the SQL are all there. Now, as this is Elementor Pro, and you get access to the expert features as well, you have the full complement of features inside the kit library. So you can see that if we go into the kit library, we can kit by plan and you can see free, pro and expert. Now, 
this is one of those little things. I'm sure this will be cleared up as this rolls out and matures a little bit. But at this point in time, as there's only one plan when it comes to having your hosting and everything done through the Elementor Cloud, I don't see the reasoning behind having the free pro and expert. You might as well just get rid of that because you have access to all of them anyway. But just so you know, all of the template kits are available to you inside here. And you've got the full complement of all the other features you have as part of Elementor Pro. So dynamic data, you know, templates, building your style kits, building uh, all kit libraries, those kinds of things. All those features are available to you. At this point in time, though, my understanding is that WooCommerce is not 100% fully compatible with the cloud offering right now. I'm assured that this will be coming and it will roll out relatively soon, but I have no idea when that would be. So again, if WooCommerce is an integral part to your thought to having an account on Elementor Cloud, you may want to wait until that rolls out and is tested to make sure that everything works the way it should do. So again, one of those things to bear in mind if you decide to try to hop on board, and that's one of the things that you want, you may have some limitations there. And again, when WooCommerce rolls out, this potentially going to be limitations on some of the plugins you may be able to use alongside WooCommerce. So again, before you jump on board and you want to use WooCommerce, wait for it to come out and then find out what plugins may not be supported. And the same thing goes for themes that may not be supported on the cloud platform. Now, there's no point in me going over how Elementor works because let's be honest about it, if you're already looking at this video, chances are you know about Elementor. And if not, there's tons of videos on this channel and probably tens of thousands on YouTube showing you how to get started with it. This is more about the cloud platform and what it includes as opposed to a technical look through of how to build your pages. But let's go ahead and see how fast this is. So I'm based in the UK, so we're going to use the London based test. We'll drop that inside there and let's give this a test, see how this performs. Now, I'm not too worried about things like cumulative shift and those kinds of things. This is more a case of how fast is this server size. Okay, so after running that test on GT Metrics, you can see three plus seconds for this to load with a not particularly great grade. So I'm going to run this test a couple more times just to see if there's any real reason for this. So we'll kind of get a mean average, but to start off with, not overly impressive scores. So let's just let this run through a couple more times and I'll come back and see if that's actually improved at all. Okay, I've run the test now around four times on GT Metrics and the best one was just over two seconds, but the average was probably three to three and a half seconds for a load on what is technically a relatively simple page. So at this point in time, speed is not necessarily the best. As you can see, if we take a look at the initial server response time, that took 2.3 seconds out of the three seconds for the LCP. Take that for what it is. It is basically a page builder on top of WordPress on cloud hosting that's shared. So yeah, I'm sure there's room for improvement. And I don't really know what kind of plugins you could insert into your site to see if you could actually improve this. So for example, if we go and take a look at those plugins, I wonder if we can install something like WP Rocket or anything like that. Let's have a look. Okay, so you can actually install some kind of um, sort of tools to help you speed things up. So there is options there for that, but in all honesty, not particularly impressive in these initial testings based upon one of the more modern elemental templates. So not a great starting point to be three to three and a half seconds, but you know, room for improvement should we say there. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to sort of talk about now, which I'm not really, I don't really think is a good thing about the platform. And that is if we come into the Elementor settings, inside there you can see we've still got experiments. So we have access to all of the current experiments that you'd have with Elementor Pro or the Developers Edition. Now, seeing as the platform, the whole point of the platform is to try to reduce the problems that you may have with additional plugins with potentially experimental features that are not actually live, fully tested and out of the beta and alpha stages, I would much prefer to see this removed completely. This just opens up potential for issues. And I think if you want to have that walled garden to a certain extent, that's just asking for trouble.
But okay, I've taken enough of your time up now with going through various different parts of this. Let me just quickly wrap up a couple of my final thoughts on the platform. First of all, from a value proposition point of view, it isn't a bad value proposition. You're basically paying $50 for a decent allotted amount of storage space and bandwidth over a 12 month period when you consider the fact that your license for Elementor Pro is going to send you about $49. So from a price point of view, for a feature point of view, that's actually relatively good. Yes, it has limitations on what you can install on it, which is understandable. On the negative side of things, it's not the fastest from my testing, as we've just seen. The fact that the Elementor experiments are part of this as well, I think potentially opens up problems for that you know, uh, stability point of view. I would rather see those taken out and leave those to the developer's edition of Elementor so people can test these. I would also like to see it taken out of Elementor Pro and Elementor Free, the actual full release versions. I think that is something that opens up the potential. Keep them when they're actually finished. Let people who want to test them out, test them out. That's my opinion anyway. So that's one of the things. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that you are buying just one website with no scope for expansion. You kind of literally have a one size fits all now. Now, obviously, this is something that they're probably going to change in the future. So when that rolls out, that will kind of alleviate that side of things. I would also like to see more of an agency setup where you can buy a bunch of websites because this could get a little bit frustrating when you've got to kind of just do an account for every single user, whereas you could buy 25, 50, 100, those kinds of things. And you have the same allowance for each of those, much like you would have for kind of a, a re simple reseller account. And then you just literally have, you buy a, a block of these and then you can just use those as you need them for new clients that come on board. Plus, I prefer the way Brizzy actually handles their Brizzy Cloud platform where you pay for that annually, and then you can just build websites, landing pages, pop-ups, those kinds of things, and you kind of have free reign. For me, I like that kind of platform because I like the Brizzy Cloud platform for the fact that I can use it to create landing pages or sales funnels that don't need to be tied to an entire website, that really don't need WordPress installed on there at all. I want simple, quick, and easy to get up and running with a builder that I know. So... That's something I prefer about the way that Brizzy has employed the cloud platform. But if you want WordPress and you want Elementor Pro and you want your cloud hosting all inside one company, which you might think is a positive, some might see it as a negative, some people might not care at all, then this may be something worth looking at. The price, like I say, isn't too bad at all. So my final thoughts. It's a good starting point. The value is there. You have all the features. I think some things need to be refined. I think some things need to be updated. And I also think more time and effort needs to be put into the way that the chat, the online chat and support system works. Because I tested this out yesterday. And if you're a member of the Facebook group, you'll see what I had on there. And I didn't get a particularly positive experience. That's my thoughts. That's my roundup of this. But what are your thoughts? Have you bought into Elementor Cloud? Have you tested it out? Has this opened your eyes to some opportunities or do you still think it's too limited for what you're looking for right now? As always, please do comment in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation about your thoughts about the Elemental Cloud platform option. All the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.